You ever open up a target and feel like you're staring into nothing? Like there's a site in front of you, something juicy and vulnerable, but all the useful stuff is buried behind a mountain of JavaScript, a grumpy firewall, and a bunch of error pages that tell you absolutely nothing. That used to be me. I'd hit a new target, run the usual checklist, subdomain scan, port scan, brute force some directories, and get nothing. Every single time. Until I stopped treating recon like a checklist. Because here's the truth, most recon is trash. It's not that the tools are bad, it's that people run them like rituals. They click a button, feel productive, and move on without understanding a thing. Recon is not about tools, it's about context. And once you get that, once you start looking at a target like you're profiling a person, not just a website, that's when recon gets dangerous. That's when you start finding stuff other hackers don't even see. So let me break down how I actually do recon now. This isn't some lazy script kitty checklist. This is a real strategy to map out an entire company from the outside. The goal isn't just to find one bug. The goal is to own their whole digital footprint before anyone else even shows up. I always start with subdomains, but not the basic way. Most people run subfinder, dump the output, and stop there. That's the beginning, not the point. If I get something like app.target.com, devapi.target.com, and staging login.target.com, I'm not thinking cool three subs. I'm thinking these devs have different environments. They probably test in staging before pushing to prod. They probably use some kind of pipeline. Jenkins, maybe. GitHub Actions, maybe. That tells me they have infrastructure, and pipelines leak stuff. Staging servers are usually weak. And if I can move from production to staging to something internal, that's where the real money is. But I don't stop there. I take those subdomains and feed them into a tool like HTTPX. I want to fingerprint what's running. Is this just a static page hiding behind a CDN? Or is it a dynamic server throwing out JSON? Is it built with React, Angular, Django, Laravel? Knowing the tech stack tells me where bugs are most likely to live. Now instead of scanning blind, I already have a sense of where the weak spots are. Then I go after the JavaScript. This is where the secrets are. I don't care how minified it is if it loads, I'm reading it. Most front-end code leaks something. You open up the JS files and look for fetch requests, API endpoints, tokens, weird names, anything that looks like it wasn't meant to be public. Tools like link finder and secret finder help but sometimes the best tool is your own eyes. I once found a token called auth token for testing just sitting in a JS file. No joke. This isn't theory. This happens all the time. Devs hide stuff in JS hoping no one looks. Or worse, they think their build tool will clean it up. It doesn't, and you should be the one to find it. Once you've got endpoints from the JS, start playing with them. Use burp repeater, see how they respond. Look for weird error messages. Sometimes one call gives you a 403, but another gives you a full stack trace. That's a sign. It tells you which systems are polished and which ones were forgotten, and the forgotten ones, that's where the bugs live. After that, I go passive. Loud Recon gets you nowhere on big targets. So I switch to quiet mode. I use the Wayback Machine to check old versions. Sometimes there's legacy stuff still running, but not linked anymore. I search Census and Shodan for exposed services. Maybe an old dev box is still up. Maybe there's a VPN leaking version info. I search GitHub. I look for leaked config files, environment variables, hard-coded secrets. I check public forks that mention internal stuff. I use Google to find admin panels and documents that aren't locked down. The trick is to stay quiet, go deep, and start connecting the dots. The more you collect, the more things line up. And that brings me to the most powerful step asset graphing. This is where everyone fails. Most people treat recon like a to-do list. They get a CSV with targets and scan them one by one. But real networks don't work that way. The internet is connected. And if you start mapping out subdomains, APIs, emails, cloud buckets, GitHub links, JavaScript, IP addresses, you'll start spotting patterns, naming styles, uh, shared resources, misconfigured DNS. And those patterns, they lead to the gaps. Now, yeah, some parts can be automated, but most automation is junk. If your script is dumping endpoints without context, you're not automating recon, you're automating noise. Good automation is precise. I use a mass for deep passive subdomain discovery. I use subjs and link finder for JS files. I use HTTPX and nuclei for a fast snapshot of what's live. But most of it, manual. Because the real stuff isn't found by a script. It's found by patience and logic. This works because it changes how you think. Recon starts to feel like detective work. You stop being a tool runner. You start being a hunter. You notice patterns. You learn to see the stuff scanners miss. That's why this method works. But here's the problem I kept running into. Even with this method, I was still spending six, eight hours manually chaining all these steps together on every single target, running a mass, then HTTPX, then waiting for link finder to finish, then manually correlating JavaScript endpoints with Wayback results. It was exhausting. 
And while I'm sitting there babysitting tools, other hunters are moving faster because they've, they've automated the tedious parts. So I built something that changes the game completely. It's called the Complete Recon Automation Framework. And it runs this entire methodology automatically while you focus on the high value analysis. This thing chains together 15 plus tools in the exact sequence I just showed you, feeds JavaScript findings directly into endpoint testing, cross-references wayback data with live assets, and builds those asset graphs automatically. It literally works while you sleep. I've had it running overnight and woke up to three new critical findings that manual recon would have missed. The best part? It doesn't just dump data like every other tool. It builds context. It shows you the connections. It highlights the anomalies that lead to those five-figure bounties. And I'm giving it away for free inside our private Cyberflow Academy community. But that's honestly just the beginning. See, finding vulnerabilities is only half the battle. What? The real money comes from knowing how to turn those skills into serious income. And that's exactly what we teach inside. Our members aren't just finding bugs, they're cashing out big. Just last month, one of our guys pulled $12,000 from a single critical he found using advanced techniques we teach in the academy. We're talking about people who invested a less than $30 and made it back 20x over in their first quarter. Because here's what nobody tells you, the technical skills are just the entry fee. The real money comes from knowing which programs pay fast, how to write reports that get maximum payouts, building relationships with security teams, and scaling your workflow so you're not trading time for money anymore. We teach you the business side that everyone else ignores. And since you made it this far, I'm hooking you up with 50% off using code CYBER50, but this expires in 24 hours because I can't keep this price forever. First link in the description. Even if you don't join, try this method. Really try it. Don't just skim. Follow every step. Build the context. Take your time. Then come back and tell me it's not overpowered. Because the moment it clicks, when you find something nobody else did, that's when you realize you're not just scanning, you're hunting.